Kevin Ginkle is on here with two on for the Phillies. Bottom of the seventh, Tyne runs on base. And Kevin Ginkle delivers two big outs for the Diamondbacks. Alec Bohm, Bryson Stott, JT Real Muto scheduled against Kevin Ginkle. And yes. did he go? He did. It is a strikeout. Ginkle strikes out the side in the eighth. The fans are going here at Citizens Bank Park as we move to the ninth. Wow. Let it out, big fella. Man, Kevin Ginkle was awesome for the Diamondbacks during the regular season, and the world kind of caught on after watching what he did in the postseason last year. Kevin, nice enough to take some time with us this morning on Hot Stove. Kevin, good morning. Nice to see you, man. Thanks for the time. Yeah, no problem, you guys. Thanks for having me on. Where is the offseason home for you? Where are we speaking to you now? Um, so I, I have a place here in Scottsdale. Um, I just bought a place here back in February, so... Um, I am now a uh, Arizona resident. Um, I, I grew up in San Diego, so it's uh, it's nice to you know play for the local team. I guess now, <laughs> man. <laughs> had to I change, had to change cities. <laughs> yeah, man. Me me being a former uh, D back like yourself, man. When when we made that move to Arizona, playing for the D backs, being able to spend the off seasons there, people don't realize how nice that is. When spring training comes around, you don't have to worry about packing bags. You know, packing suitcases, shipping cars, everything is right there at home. It's a million players that you can work out with on a day-to-day -day basis, man. Is is um is it just is it is it heaven out there right now? It's 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 beautiful right now. Um, God, I love the golf, so it's nice to get you know 60, 70 degree weather for the most part. Um, it, it's it's nice. I think uh, a lot of guys try and take advantage of of living here year round. Um, and it's it's a blessing for sure. Um, I think, you know, just playing in different cities, you know, you gotta, you know, travel a little bit and, you know, have, have a spring training, you know, in, in Florida or Arizona, and then you have to move and play your season, um, in whatever city you're at. But uh, I'm, I'm super fortunate to live here. I kind of have to survive the summers a little bit, but, uh, for the most part, it's a, it's a nice place to be. Where was that? Did you see the photo we just put up of you playing golf? Was that in Coronado someplace? Was that the Coronado Bridge behind you? Where was that? Yes. So that that was at Coronado. Um, those are some of my uh, junior college buddies that I played with. Uh, they had a, a scramble tournament going on, so got to play Coronado. It's always hard to get on that course just because it's always so busy. But uh, yeah, that, that was me back there. Um, gosh, right right before Christmas. So all right, um, so you're back yeah, there. You can't, yeah, can't with beat the, the, the JUCO boys. Uh, that, and that kind of leads me in the next direction because um, your prep career is pretty interesting. You were at Southwestern. You went to the Harvard of the West, the University of Arizona. After that, um, and you were drafted a few times before you finally came out. Uh, I think in no particular order. Was it the Red Sox first and then the Giants tried to draft you and you went back to school? Take us back to that point in your career, Kevin, and, and why you made the choices you did and didn't come out when you were first drafted. Yeah, uh, so the first the first time was with the Giants. Um, I was, you know, I, I think for, for me, you know, I, I thought that pro ball wasn't in the best interest at the time. Um, I really wanted to get a scholarship about coming out of uh, college or junior college. And, and then the second go around was with the Red Sox. And um, that was an opportunity where I went to go play uh, in the Cape Cod Summer League. And I wanted an opportunity to, you know, sign for more. And so I had a commitment to University of Arizona at the time. And, um, you know, it didn't work out. So, um, you know, I had to kind of change everything and, and get everything set up because my original thought was I wanted to, you know, get a contract, in, you know, with the Red Sox, but that didn't happen at the time. And so, um, you know, I think going to the University of Arizona was a big deal for me and, and where I was at in my career. And, um, and I, I thought it was a great decision at the time. And, um, you know, Everything has a reason, I guess. Yeah, man. It all worked out for you. you. You ended up making the right decision at every step. Yeah, when just just to just to cap that off, Gink, what because everybody has a different number or a different process or a different path that they see them making to make it to the big leagues. When you're going through each stage of that, was it essentially pretty much a money decision on if you're gonna go to school or go to pro ball? Um 
Um, it, it came down to it, yes. Um, the the first go around with the Giants, um, there there were some political reasons involved. Um, I, I don't want to get too far into it, but um, with the Red Sox, you know, I had a number in mind, and I didn't get that number, and so, you know, I think going to the University of Arizona, playing in the World Series, getting that chance, um, and then getting essentially drafted by the, the, the local team, I thought it was, I, you know, I thought it was a good decision for me and where I was at. I was very close to getting my degree. I was very close, um, you know, credits wise, but, uh, you know, for me, I thought it was the best time for me to get an opportunity. And, um, you know, I think it's every young guy's dream to, to get an opportunity to play in pro ball and play in the big leagues at some day, you know, someday. So let's let's talk a little bit about the season, the postseason in particular. Um, you're in the big leagues for four years. You're a career Diamondback. You get to the postseason for the first time this year. Make it all the way to the World Series and ten appearances without giving up a run. It would appear that the stage was never too big for you this year. Was there ever a moment, Kevin, on the mound where kind of the magnitude of a winner go home or a World Series was something that you you kind of took stock in, or was it any other game for you, as the numbers would indicate? Um, yeah, good question. I I felt like for me, I, I was prepared. Um, you know, obviously, I'd never pitched in the postseason before, or our team hasn't, but. Uh, you know, I thought for me, I was I was ultra prepared. I was ready to go. Um, you know, I wanted to just be, you know, a safety net uh, for for this club. You know, in whatever spot they threw me in. Yes. And um, I think uh, for me, it was just trusting myself, having confidence. And I, I honestly think, you know, anything's possible if you if you believe it and um, you work hard at it. And, um, you know, I, I think for me, this postseason, it was, it was very special. And, um, you know, I hope to hope to run it back again with this club. Gang, when watching you perform in the postseason, or even from the beginning of the season leading up into the postseason, it seems like you learned the ability to be able to really use a hitter's adrenaline against them. I mean, it's something that I went through as a hitter. Every time I face the close, you're always trying to do a little bit more. How much did you intently use that adrenaline to your advantage to because where when I'm looking at your slider is your elite pitch. You threw that out of the zone pretty much majority of time in the postseason and just trusted that the hitters are going to chase it. Yeah, I um, for me, I thought that, you know, it was all about my breath, controlling the breath, being in the present moment. Um, and, you know, I think with my slider, it's it's a quality pitch. I can throw it. Um, you know, out of the zone a lot, but um, for me, if, if I'm able to trust it and and throw it to you know a certain spot, um, whether it's a ball or a strike, I think I'm going to get the the desired results I want. Um, but uh, you know, also I think having my four seam fastball, and my two seam fastball, um, has kind of opened up the plate for me. So, um, you know, I think uh, it's just continuing to to do that and work on that. But uh, it, it gave me a lot of opportunities, a lot of a lot of soft contact, um, and you know, a lot of swing and miss well, going back to the slide. So. Yeah. Speaking of that slider, I talked to a lot of veteran guys and young pitchers. How much are you using technology to determine? the shape that you're going to get? Like, how much are you really paying attention to your extension or your vertical release points to be able to make an adjustment on a pitch right there on the fly? Um, good question. I, when I'm out there, I, I don't, you know, pay too much attention to the analytics and, like, how that felt or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I'll typically look at my outings uh, right after an inning's over with and kind of look at you know all the all the different numbers and see how everything looked and shaped that game and you know if i need to work on something in the bullpen you know the following day um i'll take the chance to do that but uh, for me i think um it's it's just trusting my stuff when i'm out there and trying to get the results i want um and being you know being present and then Whenever my outing or game is over with, I try and focus on uh, maybe something, tweaking something, tinkering, whatever, trying to get, trying to get the, you know, the outcome or 
whatever I'm working on. That, to get where that I'm slider of yours is no fair, dude. If, if I had that, <laughs> I, honestly, it would be my screensaver. I would dig myself and watch video of it constantly. I have two really quick questions for you, Kevin, before we say goodbye. Uh, first one, I'm not sure how, how often you run around Tucson these days anymore, but as a uh, U of A, is Bob Dobbs still open? Bob Dobb, good question. Um, I believe it is, yeah. Okay, that was the best burger in Tucson when I when I worked there mm -hmm. in the mid-90s. Good spot. <laughs> Repeated on you a little bit because of the Worcestershire sauce, but it was fantastic going down. Uh, second question, yeah. can you get Mike Fetters to come on this program? Because we can't. <laughs> He doesn't wake up until like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He's got his program. He's always too cool, too busy. If you talk to Fett in the offseason, shake him for us a little bit. We want to get him on as a guest. I love the guy, but he blows us off all the time. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to talk to him. Please. Here. I'm, I'm going to see him here. here in a little bit. I got a bullpen, and so I'll, I'll, I'll run that by him. Please. He, yes. He's always, he's, always, <laughs> he's always a good guy. I always, the other day, it's funny, I um, – I saw him in the clubhouse, and uh, you know I, he was walking up, and I hadn't seen him all off season. I was like, "Coach Fett, how are you?" <laughs> and he calls me "player." You know, is his response. So. <laughs> yeah, get, get it's, it's, lobby it's for us favorite. a little bit. We want to get Fett on the program. Hey, Kevin, we appreciate the time, man. Congrats on such a great year. Enjoy the rest of your off season. We'll see you in camp. Sounds good, guys. Thanks so much.